of my house. It's like my getaway from the desert. It's the back house in Atwater, and a preacher and his wife live in the front house. I come from a really strong Christian background. I believe in the Ten Commandments, but I break them. I just don't need to believe in magic talking monkeys to break the rules, you know what I mean? But I love these guys and I respect what he's doing. It's really weird, but I expect preachers to be good so I can be bad. I came to LA to make rock and roll. Along the way, I had to sell my soul. I made some good friends that make me say, I really want to be in LA. See the evidence of throwing knives? An all-night throwing knife session. Tuesday, my baby is one of the deadliest knife throwers in the world. It here is a is a gratuitous mess. A lot of classic gear hidden all around here, and someone talked. This is very critical. I think this is the operating paradigm for the road crew member. A, a sailor sinking into the waters is because someone talked. We're all on a big ship called the Rock and Roll Tour Bus, and when someone talks, everything goes down. They find the hooker's body, you go to jail. I think this man found a genie and he got one wish and he wished for a little head. <laughs> Hi, I'm Boots Electric. Sitting here admiring a painting of myself, I was stricken with something. The road is an amazing, dangerous, unbelievable place. And when you come to the end, ultimately, it's a big show with a giant flashing smoking head. And then there's the man behind the curtain. And in many respects, the man behind the curtain, the secret service agent, the one who takes the rap and never gets credit, is the road crew member, the roadie starting with tonight at Queens of the Stone Age and using one of the finest road crew members of all time, Hutch, Patrick Hutchinson. I think we're gonna answer these questions. What is the roadie? What does it mean? What does he do? Let's find out who this shadow warrior is of rock and roll. Sound checks are a private world between the crew and a band, a time where trust is key. When you were working with someone like Hutch, and I, I should say now that Hutch, he's a man of integrity, a man of respect, but it's his job every night to get that show up and running, to make these boys sound as beautiful as they can. He's the airbrush in the giant bulge on that cover, guaranteed. He is the extra girth in the balls. When you are working with a band like Queens, it goes with it the reputation and foreboding of an almighty God. Terrible, vicious, and jealous. Hey, Hutch. Yes, Josh. Did you know that, uh, that Rush Hour 3 takes place in Paris? I, I didn't know that. I've been working with him for about 15 years, and um, if he believes in something, he will, he will walk over glass and fire and, and uh, hot lava to, to help see it through, you know? It's like there's a lot of magicians running around, there's, and he's a wizard. He is definitely the wizard. You know, when every rock and roller finally hits that road and takes up the dream, they dream of going to certain places. And I guarantee you one of the places they want to go to is the Wiltern Theater, one of the most magical venues that Sunset and Hollywood has ever known. When they come out of the gate, you can't simulate that in sound check, you know? They're going to come out of the gate like 10 times harder than they sound check, always. Boom! It's like trying to jump on a bomb to smother it. Well, 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 for this is our old friend, Los Angeles. How you doing tonight, everybody? Hutch became a sound man because DOA won a Battle of the Bands competition. <laughs> and Joe Shithead uh, goes, Hutch, you're the sound man. And they won a PA, which they then took and did all their shows with. And then that was how Hutch cut his teeth, you know, starting from going, what are all these knobs, to, you know, figuring out at least what a third of the knobs do. A friend of mine entered a, a contest in Cream Magazine. <laughs> Is that how you got into mixing sounds? Yeah. 
as a fluke of, yeah. of, of a yeah. random chance. Yeah, we won a soundboard and somebody had to learn how to use it. You, in my opinion, Hutch, are the benchmark and the standard for uh, what is required and what is the best of the best in rock and roll. And you do much more than just uh, mix sound for a band. And Queens, there's so many photo shoots where you're pictures yeah, of band member without even question. In the early days, for sure. You, you know, know Theo Van Rock, he used to do sound for like Rollins and I think Black Flag. Yeah. And they used to take photos with him and stuff. When we met Hutch and the tradition of Theo Van Rock and things like that, you know, we've taken, done many photo shoots with Hutch because Kais was so in a bubble and naive about so much stuff. Right. That we didn't realize there was such a division between band and crew in most band situations. So my friends were learning how to play their instruments and I was always into the theater side of things, the production, right. the presentation. So it just naturally seemed like you do that part, I'll do this part. And so that's how I got started. But it wasn't until I started working for bands like DOA that I got to see the country and that what I liked doing took me places. It's DOA, no means no. Um, Taj Mahal, The Cramps, uh, Early Hole. That sounds funny, Early Hole. Early Hole. Like in the morning when you wake up and you have Early Hole. <laughs> and you're like, oh my God, is this even mine? <laughs> That's real. And, uh, Caius, and, and basically his pedigree kind of stops there in a way for a long time because um, the way Hutch has always approached it like a family was coincidentally the way that we approached it. So I haven't played a gig without Hutch since I was 18. So I'm wondering, what was the first band where you saw people that you were like, I like, th this is a way to do it? I know, there's a chance to open for some big acts, like when Caius supported uh, Faith No More. Right. Those folks were really friendly and, and really helpful, and we got to see how a larger scale presentation was put on. Up until then, we were uh, five guys nuts to butts in a van. You know how I am. I really take very seriously the reverence aspect of this rock and roll thing. And when someone like Hutch gave me his approval for the first time, it was like getting a fucking graduation diploma in a way, you know. When you work with Hutch, like in a way you're performing as much for Hutch as any audience. <laughs> There's a certain Hutch pressure, like Hutch is never uh, gonna say that, boy, you guys were super good. Yeah, like that's that. Right. Yeah. And all the years that Hutch has done sound with me, uh, he said, I think about three or four times, that was fucking amazing. Right. You know, and each time I was sort of like, you know, just. <laughs> Thank you so much. So this is it. This is the last show of our first record tours. So I'm just going to shut up and keep playing. I trust in you to tell me what's going on and I have something sucks, so tell me. There's really no one like you. Not everyone can tell a band, look, dude, that sucked. And A, be able to get away with it in a way, but also B, make it, it's true when you say it. You know what I mean? I, I care, I'm passionate. Right. I want to see it better. Absolutely. How can we make this better? Yeah. And I've always worked with music that I loved and that I could be passionate about. It really keeps coming back to that. That the sacrifices you make touring, leaving things and people behind, you know, I'm out there with guys that I would take a punch for. And you've I, lived I, that, I, I, see. Love, I love the music. I love the, what happens when the audience and the band gets together. That's, that's addiction. I get addicted to that, for sure. My grandpa used to say, son, if it looks like an Indian and smells like an Indian, it sure as shit ain't John Wayne. And tonight really proved that. I saw in Hutch everything I hoped and I knew that I would see. A true wizard. But I'll tell you what, right now, people, I am hungry for this. I got an itch. We've seen the integrity side. We've seen the noble element and the shiny eagle of rock and roll. Well, let's get to the underbelly, the snake's tongue. I really wanna be in LA. I really wanna be in LA. I want answers, goddammit, and I shall get them. I really wanna be in LA. 